Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this Lighthouse Point City Commission workshop to discuss uh, the Yacht Club, proposed Yacht Club land use amendment. I'd like to remind everybody that every city commission meeting should be this well attended, but we uh, understand um, that this is an important issue, and that's why the city commission suggested that we sit down with our planning and zoning board, who play a, a really big role in this process, so we can try, keyword try, to make this more efficient. Um, I'm going to give an outlay of what tonight's going to look like. Um, we're going to have some housekeeping issues. I'm going to turn it over to the mayor. He's going to have some opening comments. I'm going to turn it over to our city administrator, who's going to give everybody an overview of the process. And the key word there is process uh, for how this is going to go through the city to the county and back down to the city. We're then going to allow um, the petitioner, Mr. Patterson, and his team to make a presentation. Um, we are then going to hear from our police chief, our fire chief, our planning and zoning director. And then, after all that, we're going to get to the meat of the matter, and we're going to have a discussion between the city commission and the planning and zoning board, which is really probably the most important role here because the petitioner is going to need to hear that stuff. We want the residents to hear all that so they can be fully informed and provide input to us. It's very important to me, and I think everybody up here, if I may be so bold to say it, that we hear from the residents. Unfortunately, given the time constraints we're under, and you're going to see me be a little, a little, a little tough with everybody tonight because I'm going to keep everybody on a tight schedule, I'm going to try and do that so we have a little time to hear from the public tonight. I cannot promise that. But what I want to tell you is there's going to be no vote taken tonight. There's going to be no action taken. We can't do that. Correct, Mr. City Attorney? No action? Not in a workshop. Not in a workshop. Cannot be taken tonight. And there is going to be plenty of opportunity to hear from the public in an open environment like this. We've already discussed having another one of these uh, workshops. So I've already taken up too much time. I'm breaking my own rule. So with that said, oh, if you could please silence your cell phones. Um, that will uh, minimize the disturbances. And uh, we'll turn it over to our mayor. No. Oh, sorry, housekeeping issue. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Dennis Smith, uh, Chairman of the PNZ Board and Lighthouse Point. Uh, very proud to be a Lighthouse Point resident. Um, I do have to declare a conflict on this matter, so I have my form filled out. I'm going to turn it in, and I'm going to depart. And the reason for your conflict, uh, The reason for our conflict is uh, my law firm and one of my partners uh, represents the uh, developer. Thank you. This needs to be set on Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. Now... I will turn it over to our mayor for some opening comments, and I'm going to respectfully but sternly keep everybody on a tight time schedule. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Um, just a brief history. There's been a lot of rumors going around about what's going on, what the status of the project is, so we thought it might be a good idea just to give you a little bit of history. Um, the first app formal application was made to the city on July 9th. On July 13th, there was a limited DRC meeting with the city planner, the city attorney, and the city administrator. Out of that, an updated application was received by the city on August 3rd. Now, I will tell you, there were prior informal meetings prior to all of these dates, but th these are the first formal actions taken. On August 10th, there was a limited development review committee meeting that involved myself, the city planner, the city attorney, and representatives from the applicant, including Mr. Patterson and his attorney. Um, there was a full development review committee on, eight, on August 14th where substantive comments that will be discussed tonight were provided, and then we have the workshop tonight. The first public hearing, the first actual hearing for on this project is going to be on October 2nd. So that's at 7.30 p.m., and that will be here, and that will be a planning and zoning meeting. We want this project and this process to be as transparent and possi as possible. No decisions have been made about this project. No promises have been made by Mr. Patterson about this project, nor by the city about this project. And we understand there's a lot of people with opinions about this project. If you would like to submit them in writing, we encourage you to do so. We will make them part of the record on this matter. Send them to Jennifer O, our city clerk, and she will be happy to make sure that all the commissioners and all the members of planning and zoning 
hear, hear about this project. Okay. There's going to be limited time to speak tonight because of the, of the constraints we're under, as Jason mentioned. We're going to attempt to set up another meeting. Um, we've had discussions about possibly doing it on a Saturday when people aren't working, possibly doing it in an afternoon when um, folks that have young children or in early mor or, or in morning when folks that have children in school and would have other otherwise have daycare issues in the afternoon might be attending. So we're going to try and do a lot of different things. Okay, um, in addition to all of this, we're going to um, keep everybody informed. Okay, everything's going to happen, so everybody's informed as to what goes on through all steps. And I'll turn it over to John Levisky, our city administrator, and let him talk about the steps moving forward. Good evening. Um, glad to be here. John Levisky, city administrator. This is just the beginning of the process. And, and I know the commissioners know it and the board members know it, but the residents need to know it too. This is, just, this is the beginning of the process, and a lot of things need to happen uh, before the project can be approved. And the first thing is a land use amendment, and that's what we're processing now. After it comes to the plan, goes to the Planning and Zoning Board on October 2nd. There you go. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to speak right into it. The first thing that needs to occur is a land use plan amendment. And that's going to go to the uh, Planning and Zoning Board on October 2nd, like the mayor mentioned. And that's going to be the first public hearing. And then after, it's going to go to the city commission for an ordinance. And that's going to be another public hearing. After, after the first reading of the ordinance, it's going to be transmitted to Broward County. And that process takes about five or six months before it comes back to the city. And, and that's out of our control. Other things that need to happen is the rezoning to multifamily residential. Uh, a conditional use needs to be approved for the uh, for the three-story townhomes. Then site plan approval and perhaps some code changes. This is going to take some ordinances because the way the development is proposed right now, it, there's many items that just don't meet the city code. Uh, the development plans will be reviewed in-house by the Development Review Committee, and we've looked at it. Uh, the Marine Advisory Board is going to look at the plan, the Community Appearance Board, and the Planning and Zoning Board and the City Commission. There's going to be multiple meetings of the Planning and Zoning Board and the City Commission looking at this development. There's going to be at least 10 public hearings on this project. And I want to repeat myself. There's going to be at least 10 public hearings that you can come and give your comments to the Planning and Zoning Board and the City Commission. What we'll do is we'll post a schedule of the meetings and the public hearings on the city's website. So we want to have as much input as, as we can get. Tonight you were provided with the minutes of the August 14th DRC meeting. Uh, generally, the biggest concerns of the Development Review Committee are the compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood, the density of the project, the increased traffic, the insufficient parking, and a the biggest problem of all is the limited access to emergency vehicles on the parcel. And I know the fire chief and the police chief later are going to want to make some comments on that. And that's all my comments I have, unless you have some questions for me. Does anybody have any questions on the process? I believe we're all familiar with it in the interest of time. But... Okay, thank you, Mr. Levisky. Uh, just two other points to hit really quickly. As the mayor has informed me, we're going to set up a special portal. Is it going to be on the website? It's going to be on the website. We'll post the plans as we, as we receive them. Um, at all hearings will be posted on the front page of the website so people have an opportunity to learn about them. We will make sure, and uh, similar to what we did uh, with respect to this workshop, we will also send out um, through, the, through an email notice letting residents know when public hearings are coming up. Okay. And we are videoing this? Okay, and they, the videos will be posted online as well? Absolutely. Everybody smile for the camera. Say hello. Um, all right. Well, with that said, um, we'll turn it over to Mr. Patterson and his team for uh, a presentation. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to make two requests, Madam Clerk, in the interest of time. Can you set the clock for 20 minutes? I take no umbrage and cutting people off. I'm going to have much more fun doing it to Commissioner Van Buskirk when I have to do it. But to keep things moving, we're going to uh, we're going to limit you to 20 minutes. And can we turn that a little bit so the commissioners and planning and zoning board members can do that? But use the 20 minutes as you would like. And. Um,
Can every okay? I don't want anybody to hurt themselves. It's not. <laughs> In, in the interest of time, I'll speak while, um, while we're working on the video. I actually, um, my name is Stephanie Toothaker. I'm an attorney with Trip Scott. Um, I represent Patterson Development and the, um, exactly. and the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club uh, proposed redevelopment. I, I did have a PowerPoint that I'm going to skip because it really just walks through the process. And essentially, I would just be reiterating what John said, which is that we really have just started the process. We have submitted to the city a, um, a land use plan amendment. We have not submitted our rezoning application. We have not submitted our site plan application. We have a very long way to go, and we are very happy to be here this evening. We thank you for the opportunity to have this workshop. It's really an opportunity for us to hear from you, to learn. Um, we've, we've been talking to people. I know Terry and Jessica. Um, we have our whole team here. Uh, Bruce Zelensky is our architect. Cadence is our landscape architect. We have um, diversified construction and engineering services for civil. Uh, Traff Tech is our engineer, and of course, Trip Scott. We really appreciate you doing this for us. Your staff has been um, very forthcoming with their comments, the commissioners, um, planning and zoning board members, and most of all, the residents of Lighthouse Point. And we thank everybody again for the opportunity to be here. Our whole team is here. I think really we, we'd like to use the time for Terry to speak about the site plan. I know, as I said, we didn't submit a site plan application, so probably some detail that would normally be as part of the site plan application was not included because we were just trying to start the process of the land use plan amendment, but we did defer. We were originally scheduled um, for a planning and zoning board hearing that we deferred so that we could have the opportunity to have this workshop with you and with the residents um, and really, um, really hear from you. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Terry. Mr. Patterson. Thank you. Um, I understand you have a short amount of time, and uh, I tend to talk a lot, so I'm just going to read my speech as quick as I can, and I will hand you guys copies of it afterwards if uh, there's some technical data in here that you all might want to have. Um, I applaud the city's handling of the proposed rede redevelopment project of Lighthouse Point Yacht Club. I'm prepared for a good discussion and look forward to reasonably accommodating all the city and the community's ordinances and needs. I want you to remember that we are a private yacht club, a membership-driven wellness and social club, private. We're not a public restaurant or a public marina. We do facilitate outside events like weddings to supplement our income. We also facilitate outside events like charity groups, community groups, and city events because we understand the role that we play in the community. We're here to discuss the land use. This does, however, go in hand in hand with, the, with our proposed site plan. So we'll need to discuss both tonight. Please recognize that I'm asking you to lower the density of the property that is currently zoned that is currently zoned to be able to build a 50-foot tall building next to residential homes, 50-foot tall commercial building anywhere on the site. There are no limits to what, can, to what kind of commercial building, like a hotel or office building. Changing the zoning that abuts the RS3 single-family zoning to residential townhomes before it gets to the B2A commercial zoning that I currently have is a very reasonable request and helps facilitate a gradual change in density, setbacks, and height restrictions. As to the site plan, I'm getting many technical questions and, and, and concerns. I want to point out that the city, I want to point out that cities have development review committees to review all the technical details. I want the public to know that, that the finer details are being well taken care of by my team and our city employees, our city employee heads of departments. We have completed two rounds of meetings with DRC, DRC and tonight I'll present the site the site plan based on the outcome of those meetings. I do want to make it clear the revised site plan is not, is not reviewed by DRC yet. So anything I say here is not, is not in response to some of, anything I say here is in response to their, to their current comments. DRC still needs to study and comment on my changes. Parking and density is a common question, a, co a common question I'm getting. We started with 38 townhomes on, on, on our plan. We started with 10 single-family homes. Yeah, no, that's true. 10 single-family homes. I can get into why I've changed, but I'm not going to. I'll be quiet. Um, we went to 38 townhomes on our plan, and then we went to 37, then 36, 
And after our last DRC meeting, um, which I have not presented to the city yet, we're now down to 33 townhomes. This is in an effort to create more parking for the club. But I wanted the additional parking to be an open grass area for kids to play, members to members and residents to use. We can use the, we can use the stabilized grass open area as overflow parking the five or six times a year that we need it. This will make our total parking 231 vehicles if we are allowed to include valet, legal valet lots. We currently have space for 197 in the existing club and we have no legal valet stacking lots. The townhomes, the townhomes will each have four spaces plus 10 extra guest spaces, not counting the club's 231 spaces. So 231 spaces for the club and 142 for the townhouses equals a total of 373 parking spaces proposed. Can this thing move? I can try. Uh, probably not. A little bit. Okay. I want to show. I want to show everybody the proposed site plan. <clears throat> a lot of people have seen, if you've been watching online, what we've been doing. Seen a number of things that we've we've presented. What I want to do right now is take. The townhouses that were at the front entry on the right over here <coughs> and create a park with stabilized grass that vehicles can drive on even when wet without destroying the grass. Um, and we can use as a park for events for the club. But this can hold if you allow one section of it to be valet, one section not. But honestly, if it's an overflow, it'll all end up being valet. Um, it can hold 30, 30 more vehicles with a 24-foot wide um, with a 24-foot wide uh, drive aisle in the middle. And the space here. There we go. Yeah. Please excuse my red line marks up here because this is what was presented to DRC, and all my red markings are changes done that came out of the last, the last, uh, the last meeting that we just had. So to fit more green space. I'm asking for five unit townhomes, not four unit townhomes. This allows me to go up to 16 foot spaces between the buildings. They'll be 112 feet wide buildings with uh, 16 to 18 foot of space between the buildings, 35 feet high and 16 foot, separa oh, sorry, 16, 16 foot separation between the buildings, which is eight foot to the property lines and is the same as the surrounding RS3 residential neighborhood right now. Excuse me, Mr. Patterson. You said you'd go on to five with 16 foot. It's only showing 12. We're five in the middle, but yeah, the changes are in red. So this is different than this is different. Yeah, what you're showing us is different than what correct. You're Please note that there's a lot of changes on here. What I what I presented to you guys, we had a DRC meeting a week and a half ago, and a lot of things came out of that. It's going to get formally presented, plus my my comments over here, but. To discuss that, and I've already done these major changes, doesn't make sense. I want to present what we're actually going to represent to you guys. So to pick up the additional footage, did you shrink the townhomes? Because you already have five minutes. No, because if you look on your plan, this section here had a 38-foot park area, green space park. This is 29 on far left. 29 plus uh, setback. Yeah. Okay. Plus eight-foot setback. Um, now I want to put that park over here and make it accessible for, for parking, for driving, for cars. I want to, there was, let me continue reading here. All, the, um, all DLC comments have mostly been, mostly been, mostly already been addressed by my team. We are ready to resubmit the, to DLC as we are sure all parties will be satisfied with, the, with, will be satisfied to a reasonable point. However, before doing that, I wanted to hear more comments from the Community Zoning Board and City Commission here tonight. I'm going to address the site plan a little further in a second, but I just want to talk about the style of design. I know it's not what we're here to discuss, but I want to touch on it briefly because there's been a lot of comments about it. We chose transitional contemporary. We 
chose traditional contemporary because that's what's selling today. All trends point all trends point to it being the way for the many for many years to come. It started in Miami, has taken over Fort Lauderdale, and now Boca and Palm Beach. Mr. Uh, Patterson, uh, sorry, is that just ten minutes? Okay, proceed. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. What is that? Ten minutes. Very good. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, Boca and Palm Beach are, are following suit. I know. I'm, I've built and are building a number of houses in all those areas, and they're they're all contemporary. Uh, if you go research all new, home, all new homes and home developments, building permits, I'll bet you 80% of them are transitional contemporary. That's what's selling, and that's what I need to build. I will be softening the design with, the, with overwhelming landscaping. The landscape design is filled with large trees and streets lined with sil Sylvester date palms. I highly recommend that you look at any of my, any of my many houses, small luxury hotel, or, or townhome developments that I've built over many years, over the last 20 years, to understand what I mean. Seven of, seven of which I've won first place community appearance awards from the city of Fort Lauderdale. Also, look at the shops at, at Park Place in Boca. This is a good example of the lush contemporary landscaping we intend to install. Here is, this is what a cross section of the streets would look like. And down on the docks and around the pool area. It's very heavily landscaped. All the surrounding neighborhoods that would, that would normally look at this building I have here, it will be heavily landscaped right, right up on that building. Right now there are, uh, there are a bunch of laundry rooms and buildings over here that will be heavily landscaped. Over here people are looking at a parking lot and a turning circle. It will be heavily landscaped. And then what they will be looking at on these townhouses is that from the water side. That's what I run through quickly the renderings. This is what we, we haven't changed anything on the club yet. The landscaping around it is not correct, but the club is what we propose. And what's the height of the club? 50 feet as per the um, zoning of the, uh, the current zoning. In townhomes? The townhomes we're proposing 35 feet. We want, as I said, we want you to remove our ability to build 50 feet. 50 feet commercial. 50, 50 feet, feet commercial. Not 50 feet residential. Correct. Mm -hmm. We want to remove our ability to build 50 foot commercial buildings right up against the residential homes that are there right now. And that's, remember that that's not just for me. That's for somebody 50 years from now. Whatever happens to this club, we're changing that zoning forever. I want to address on the site plan <coughs> some things that came out of the, the DRC meeting. Fire department concerns, they, were, uh, they wanted additional entrance, a locked entrance for emergency egress. Please, nobody freak out yet, but this is not an entrance to the street. On this side here, the fire department has asked that we put a locked gate that only they and the, and the police department have keys to over grass. This, this, this is not a driveway either. This is stabilized grass that will look like the grass that's there right now. The difference is it can handle a fire truck during the event of an emergency. What their concern was is if these aisles, are, if there's a fire over here and these aisles get blocked, we need emergency egress access. One, one way, two lanes to avoid bottlenecks in the event of, a, of an emergency. I had 24 foot wide streets all the way around the parking lot. Those are the same wood streets that the city has in the entire city. What we will do is change it to one way driving the whole way around because the fire department was concerned that if they were fighting a fire over here, we would be blocking the traffic. Or if there was any issues, there would be traffic being blocked. No problem, we will direct the traffic around. I, I wanted the traffic directed around anyway because I need the, to direct it to the valet. The other concern was when the, valet, when the cars are in the valet that they would block the right of way. We have three lanes over here. 
This outside lane will be through traffic, permanent through traffic. They will never be blocked. The other concern was that the large ladder truck can do its turning through here. How is Okay. So by removing four parking spaces and removing all valet ability for this lot, we'll be left with 43 spaces and the fire truck, the big ladder truck, can make its way through this parking lot. There's no height issues over here because this would be at the, uh, above the height of the ladder truck in front of the club. All buildings are fire sprinkled, which will hopefully avoid the need to even have a fire truck in there fighting any fires. All new fire hydrants per fire code will be put on the property and around the marina. Police department concerns. Redesign the front entry island for easier flow of traffic. Police department was concerned that the traffic would have to turn onto 42nd Street and then go in straight. I've redesigned the island to pretty much mimic what I have now, where the, where the traffic just flows easily into the front gate. One second stop. There is not, this is not a manned um, guard booth. There will be a desk, a toilet, air conditioned. I would like to give this to the city of Lighthouse Point Police Department. I know they don't need it. I know they probably don't want it, but I'm building it. If you want it, it's yours. Um, do what you want with it, but I will not have a man in it. I will, however, have cameras in it. It will be wired for everything needed. Anybody coming in and out will stop for a second, click camera, go in. So there will never be a bottleneck coming in here. It will also help slow the traffic down as they come into the club. You all know how fast people fly into my club right now. It is... It, it, it's not acceptable that this will stop that. And I'm the one that gets blamed for that. Building one, redesigned for easier access. There were concerns that people couldn't pull out of their driveways here. So it's designed it that people can pull their cars out and go out straight. I also increased this from a 12-foot drive aisle to an 18-foot drive aisle and left 18 feet on the turning circle so that this guy over here, he can easily just go into the turning circle and come out. Um, the club is also willing to pay for sidewalks and speed control tables down northeast 27th Terrace. That would be all the way along here on 27th Terrace and speed tables. I understand that's a, that's a bigger process than it sounds, but I would like to start that process. Ms. Press, quick question. So on building one, you shrank those two buildings and created a driveway? Or? No, I didn't shrink it. To, um, I put it to the, to the eight-foot setback. I'm going, to move, okay. I'm going to move these buildings down to here. I'm sorry I didn't have this pre-done before I came here, but I've changed it 15 times to the tune of $150,000, and I still don't have the correct site plan. Okay. So these red lines, these red marks, and I'm going to make more marks. I'm just trying to change as I go away. Okay, okay. I'll submit this to you. Okay, last thing, yeah. and then I'm done. Parking, because I know that's the big ticket item here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Existing, we've got 197 spaces with no, no legitimate valet lots due to the 15-foot drive aisles. You, you understand why, is why I can't valet in the lots? The drive aisles are too, too narrow. The cars have to go in at an angle. They, they're not legitimate drive aisles. The valet that we have now, that's, that's just cars parked willy-nilly wherever. That is not valid. That's not counted. If the ability for us to do that doesn't change. doesn't mean I'm going to do it. But I now have proper valet spaces that you can park at without, without causing any problems for other vehicles. What we're proposing is 158 regular spaces, 43 valet spaces only in the main lot, and 30 overflow spaces in the stabilized grass lot, which equals 231 total spaces for the club. That would be, the only valet lot would be here in the middle. <coughs> So this would not be a valet lot. The 43 vehicles here would be members for members to use without the valet. This lot here would fit 30 vehicles. It's going to be an overflow time. We have full, we have full time valet all the time anyway. Um, this will end up being a valet lot. What, will, what we do right now, people say that we park out on the street here. It's not members or guests that park on the street. It's our staff that park outside. What we would do is park our staff inside the property, right up against all these 10 spaces, up against this building, and then the rest would be used as a as valet um, 
by Jeff. Proposed for the townhouses, 33 townhouses have four spaces, that's 132 spaces. 10 additional spaces, it's 142. That's total spaces that they don't take away. These spaces here are not counted in my, my townhouse, I mean my um, club parking. Mr. Myers, Neither. I, I, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I promised everybody I was going to. We're done? You're done. Okay. All right. I don't want we're going to we're gonna hear a lot from you okay. over the week, so. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. <laughs> you, almost got, you almost got it in. I'm impressed. Um, You're okay. We got all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Patterson. Thank Ms. Two Baker, thank you very much. Um, you. We're going to turn it over to, we're going to hear from our fire chief, our police chief, and our planning and zoning director. Um, I'm going to ask them well, one thing, I think, based on what I've heard, there's been a lot of changes that have been proposed that our fire chief, our police chief and probably our planning and zone director have been hearing for the first time tonight. So I think they're going to be probably providing some hopefully more overarching comments. Um, I'm going to ask them to limit their comments to five minutes each with maybe a little bit of wiggle room because Mr. Patterson had more time. But um, hopefully that will be sufficient. So could Fire Chief Gil Martin please step forward and probably provide comments overall and then to the extent you can, I know five minutes is hard, a comment on some of the, the new things you've just seen. Good evening. Sean Gilmartin, Fire Chief. Uh, we reviewed these plans at the DRC that we initially got these, and um, there was changes then when we got them then, and now there's more changes to it. Um, at the meeting, when I, we were at the meeting, I, I handed over what um, fire codes and stuff that dealt with the uh, – basic site plan that was going to be needed, what, what kind of uh, infrastructure was going to be needed for the fire department for this type of project. And uh, basically that's why they have the code is so they can work off those to have the 24-foot driveways that are through their access that we need, the dual access that he was talking about. That's all part of the fire codes for that. So basically, all, you know, we, there's a lot to this site plan that has to be determined. Uh, you know, we don't know where hydrants are. We don't know where any of that stuff is there. We told them the, the needs, the basic needs that we were going to need for this project as far as fire department connections for each one of the docks that were going to be there. We're going to need the hydrants. They need the dual access, all, all those types of, of things that, that, were, uh, that we need. So we went through them. He did make, you know, he went in there. He tried to address most of them. But like everything, it's, you know, one thing might not change anything. Another thing might change 10 things. We were worried initially with the amount of water flow that would be available for the project. Uh, then we discovered that the, uh, the whole project was going to be sprinklered. That makes a big difference in the fire service. Once they bring in sprinklers, it makes a big, huge difference on things. Uh, we were needed access for our truck. We gave them the turning radius for our, our truck that for our ladder truck, the biggest truck, so we could make its way around the parking lot. So they have the exact uh, turning radiuses that's needed for our truck, not just a generic thing or whatever. It's, 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 it's uh, so we have those things. Um, uh, like I said, there was the dual access for, uh, was in there. Uh, we have a couple other issues was, uh, That was most, mostly that was just our access to get around to the parking lots and stuff with the cars parked there. Without knowing where hydrants and stuff are located, we're not going to know where we're going to set up the truck. Fire could be anywhere. It could be in the, in the car in the parking lot. It could be in the building right next door. So all, all kinds of things are issues for us. But like I said, I tried to provide them with, you know, which, which the NFPA codes and the life safety codes that were going to be applicable to their, their development. And until we can see more information, I, that's really about as best as we can do with all that stuff. So, unless there's any other questions, that's pretty much all I have for you. Yeah, just just one thing, Chief. Um, I know we had talked about this before, and I think it's in your notes. The parking space that's over by B and C docks, where I think Mr. Patterson said was now going to be uh, not valet, but would be uh, 
just regular member parking. You're talking in the upper right hand. In the upper, in this upper right hand corner back that's, here. That's the A and B dock. Right. right. Is it um, A and B dock? One of your concerns you expressed was you would not be able to get the ladder, the 75 foot ladder truck, in there and make it turn. Uh, is that? Um, that's that, still an issue for us. Okay. But that I was listening to him speak, and I, he on this next correction that he said he removed parking spots and made the made it a, to be able to turn so there. Seven. So I don't know what I don't know what it is until I see it. Okay. So, but we did provide him, you know, for his engineers to know exactly what what it was that our truck mm -hmm. would need. Well, it would be multiple trucks, I assume, in a dock fire, correct? Well, that's the biggest truck that we have. So. Right. Okay. But we there would pack up if it gets that if that place gets going, that would be packed up. Got it. So we'll have Thank trucks you. from Pompano and. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Please, please. I like it. Everybody gets everybody gets round of applause tonight. <laughs> it's early. It's early. Everybody gets round of applause. Please, Chief Lakata. As far as I know, I have to get king size bed in that car. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I like it. There you go. Chief Lakata. Chief Lakata. Right. Chief Lakata. I can direct your comments a little bit because I know you. I will take you off your game. I saw in your DRC comments there will need to be some traffic calming along Northeast 27th Avenue, and I know that that's a um, usually that's a discussion that we have about traffic calming, what that means. So that's an important one. We've seen a lot of input from the residents about that. So I'd like to at least to see you touch that on your five minutes starting now. I do. I plan to. Okay. Um, good evening, uh, Harris, Mayor, sorry. Commissioners, members of the Planning and Zoning Board. As you know, uh, my responsibility as a DRC meeting is to review projects that have come before the city regarding access, parking, circulation, and security issues. One of the first things I looked at on the project is the parking, the parking concerns. Uh, even as the project exists now, there, there are oftentimes some overflow of parking at the Yacht Club out onto Northeast 42nd Street. And uh, my concern, obviously, was the, with the increased density of 36. Now I understand there's going to be 32 townhomes with the use of the of the yacht club and the reduction of parking spaces. And I know my numbers are a little different from Mr. Patterson. Uh, I counted approximately 45 parking spaces that are being reduced from what exists now to what is being proposed. And I'm counting designated parking spaces. I'm not counting tandem parking spaces that are going to be used for valet that may not be authorized or may not be approved by the city. I'm counting designated parking spaces. If you take into account you're reducing 45 parking spaces, adding 32 or 36 townhomes, which in and of itself is probably going to increase the demand for parking on the property because people have guests, they have parties, they have events, they have service workers coming to their property and are likely going to be using some of the general parking in the area as well. One point I'd like to make is um, with the reduction of parking, uh, I'm concerned about the lack of it pushing overflow parking out onto Northeast 42nd Street. Sorry. Three minutes. Lost my no, three minutes. Lost. three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Um, with the reduction in parking, we're currently using the north side parking swell for parking. That that may go away with the development of the project. There's going to be a new swell there uh, that will be developed, and we may not be able to park cars there, which could potentially push cars further back into the neighborhood. Uh, some of the Tandem Valley parking issues have been addressed. I understand that there are not going to be tandem valet parking in the northeast lot, which I think is a good thing, and a reduction of some spaces. Whether or not there's adequate circulation for a fire truck and emergency vehicles, uh, that will have to be determined. Again, we have not looked at these new plans. We're going based on what was provided before. Um, uh, some of the issues that, were, that I had some concerns about with the townhouse and building number one, were that some uh, homeowners that were coming into the project would not be able to turn directly into their property. They would have to go around the entire circulation road or pull into somebody's private driveway and make a three-point turn to be able to access their property. I saw that as a potentially uh, problematic. Uh, it, it looks like they're uh, 
Mr. Patterson is trying to work around that and to resolve some of those issues. Uh, the secondary emergency access, I think, is important. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why that uh, the main entrance may not be accessible for uh, emergency workers. There could be a power line down. It could be a sewer main down. Uh, uh, emergency situation where the police and fire need that area. So not suggesting that be open on a regular basis, but to be able to have access for emergency responders is a good thing. Uh, I did have some concerns about the guardhouse. Um, I know Mr. Patterson said that they did not intend on using it as your typical guardhouse where there would be a gate and there would be limited access. My concern obviously was during special events if you have a larger number of vehicles that are stacking there waiting to gain access into the property, it's going to back up onto 42nd Street. It's going to back up onto Northeast 27 Terrace. could potentially uh, block traffic and block driveways and become a problem for the community. It's my understanding now that there will, no, uh, there will not be somebody there and they will not be controlling access into the community. That, that does need to be clarified for us and for any future homeowners that are buying in there with the expectation that they're getting a gated community for security there. Um, and finally, the issue about traffic calming. Uh, we have had a number of concerns brought to our attention about speeding cars, about the large number of vehicles traveling to and from the Yacht Club. This is going to be exacerbated with the addition of 36 townhomes on the property. We would obviously work with Broward County Traffic Engineering to make determinations on what the appropriate traffic calming would be. That's who we use when we, uh, when we do our studies. But I definitely think that uh, some considerations need to be given uh, to address the speeding, to address the traffic, which could include speed humps, diverters, sidewalks, uh, to enhance the safety for those that live in that area. Thank you, Chief. And then, uh, finally, Ms. Melbourne, our planning and zoning extraordinaire. Oops. Yes, thank you, and good evening. Uh, my name is Michelle Melbourne. I am the city planner. I'm not going to go into a deep dive with the specifics, just particularly because we have basically, from my perspective, a, a new plan, but I'll give you just a brief overview. Um, as a city planner, I really am kind of a technician on behalf of the city, and for the application that's going to be first considered, which is the land use plan amendment, I'm going to be evaluating the application in light of the comprehensive plan that's adopted by the city. Can you translate that into English? I, I bet you nobody knows where I'm at. So can you translate what a land, I just learned it about two months ago. So can you tell them what a land plan, land use plan amendment is? Do I get more than five minutes? No. <laughs> you gotta give, okay. you gotta give the, you gotta give the simple version. I, it, it's very simple. State law requires that every municipality in the state of Florida adopt what is basically a blueprint for the future, and that is the comprehensive plan. And the cities are required to address future land use, transportation, housing, water and sewer, the, the basic things that make a city work so that we have a guide to the future and at the end of it all you have to have a capital plan that shows how you're going to fund it so you're not bankrupt at the end of the day. It goes for every plan. So the comprehensive plan is comprised of goals, objectives and policies. With respect to this, the number one goal in the comprehensive plan of the City of Lighthouse Point is to maintain the city as a low density residential suburban community. That's what that goal number one says. So I'm going to be looking at this proposal for this land use plan in light of that number one goal. The next thing that will happen then we're focusing a little bit on that is the site plan. You're getting a glimpse of it, although that's technically not part of a land use plan amendment. But the site plan, of course, has the specifics of how the um, whole development will be laid out. And in that regard, I'm going to be reviewing that site plan in conjunction with the adopted zoning regulations, the land development code. If you've looked at my DRC comments, you will note that I had probably, I think, two pages of comments of where I found the plan as I first saw it te um, technically deficient. Um, or not meeting the code and it had to do with an array of issues um, not only with compatibility because again that comes up within the zoning district itself as does the comprehensive plan but also with regard to provision of parking for guest spaces, recreational amenities in the zoning district outside of the yacht club itself, uh, parking guest parking spaces for the 
um, residents that live there. Parking was an issue. The, the length of the building, the height of the building, we have any number of issues to still be addressed. Again, this is the first time I'm seeing these revised plans, so when they're formally submitted, I will have the opportunity along with other department heads to take a look at it and evaluate it more closely. I'll be happy to answer any questions. David, she's going to be our, our, our police officer for this process. Does anybody have any uh, comment, questions for Ms. Melbourne? Well done. Well done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, mean, you can, I do. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. All right. Go ahead. Just the guy. Sitting down low here. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, um, when, when the rezoning is accomplished, we have the lens How will that, I haven't seen a drawing of how the zoning lines would be. And would these be independent, separate zones that would be subject to land development regulations that relate to setbacks as required between the zoning districts? Yeah, so let me clarify that. That's a good question. So this land use plan amendment that's being proposed is a land use plan amendment to change it basically from commercial to residential to accommodate the proposed townhouses. There is a line, if you look on the graphic shown here, you can see that black dotted line that kind of goes around the townhouses and behind the tennis court. Would that be similar to that? That would be, that would be it. Okay. Yes. And that is the subject of the land use amendment. When it's time for rezoning, it would be a rezoning of that same parcel that you see outlined there. Um, and with regard to what standards uh, apply within the zoning district, that's going to be ultimately a policy decision, I believe, of the commission because, as I said, in evaluating the site plan as proposed now, there are a number of deficiencies or contradictions with the zoning codes. So it will either be granting waivers or variances or, or changing regulations to accommodate the development. So it's not, this, is not, this is not looked at as a PUD or something? No, like that. Okay. it is not. A PUD being a planned unit development where you would look at the, the yacht club and the residential development all as one big development. Sorry. Any other questions? Did you have one, Mr. Cullen? No. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Melbourne? We probably will have some maybe as we have discussions. I'm um, here. But um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, members of our planning and zoning board, this is this is why we did this, to have a robust discussion about what's been proposed. Who wants to jump into the deep end of the pool first? Well, hey, takers. May I? I thought you never asked. Oh, me. sorry. I asked you, Commissioner Brett. First of all, listen, we're going to we're going to limit. Sorry, we are going to limit comments. Absolutely. Try and give everybody an opportunity to speak to, to five minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. First of all, I, I do appreciate everybody coming out to be here this evening. I'm sure everybody else does. Uh, one of the things that I think is important is that the fact is we had a meeting on August 14th, and we actually had I know Mr. Patterson and his team came back with some information to change it around. To hopefully, as you heard the fire chief and the police chief say, to make it more suitable for the safety of our residents, making sure and addressing the concerns that we have as a city and our residents have. I think that's super important. I think this is part of the process. I definitely think it's the first part of the process, but I think it's important that, Mr. Patterson, you came back with a bunch of information that's changed and saying, hey, listen, I'm ready to work. I want to get this done. I want to show that I'm willing to work with the city and make this happen. So I, first of all, I appreciate that. One of the things that I do concern about for me, because I'm a fireman, I think that the safety Fire safety is super important. I was glad to see we included fire sprinklers. I'm super glad that we went ahead and, you know, reduced some of our parking up on the uh, AB parking lot for the boat dock so we could have turning radius for our tower ladder truck. That's super important. It gives us the opportunity, tactical-wise, for unfortunately, if we'd ever had a situation that we could utilize that lot to turn our trucks around. Uh, one of the big things, I think, in the end is that I want every resident to know, personally for me, is that, I hope that no one does not figure out where to find us on how to contact us. Our emails are on the city website. We answer them very quickly, I at least know for all of us up here. Our personal cell phones are on. I know that there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of people wanting to get out their opinions or at least to have their concerns addressed. And I just beg you, I plead with you, please do me the favor, call us, email us, do whatever, send up smoke signals, do something because we want to hear your concerns. We want to hear the positives also, because I know there's other people that are positives that want to tell how much they appreciate this project and how they're looking forward to it. So for the residents, please reach out, talk to us, because the only thing that I, only way that I know that your concerns are when you contact us. So I appreciate it. You three minutes. Left. No, you know what? I'm going to yield gonna, the floor. I'm going to yield the floor to you. You could have two extra minutes. No, I don't want it. Um, 
<laughs> Who's uh, who said that now? Okay. Well, Commissioner, yeah, and I don't need I don't need uh, full five minutes either. I just want to say what I hope happens here tonight is that the residents see that we are taking this very, very seriously. I read on social media some of the most unbelievable comments and misinformation about what's been approved and what's already been done and what's happened and the city's already given all these blanket approvals and I hope what this demonstrates tonight is that has not happened. This is early in the process. I will tell you unequivocally I want this plan to succeed. I really do. I think the Yacht Club is a huge asset for this community, but we're not just going to rubber stamp it. We're going to make sure that it meets the codes. We're going to make sure that it meets the land development requirements. We're going to make sure that it meets the police and fire reasonable uh, issues that they have, that they have raised. And we're going to go through this process and we're going to make sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted. And we're going to give everybody a chance, transparent as the mayor said, to talk about what it is they're concerned about. Now, I'm not sure we're going to be able to solve everybody's individual problems. But we're going to do the best we can. But this is a good thing for the city. It's an important thing for the city. It's a huge asset for the city. We want it to work. But we're not just going to give it a rubber stamp and let it go. We're going to make sure that it's done by the book. We're going to make sure that we've got all the pieces put together properly. I think this is a good process. This is a good beginning. This is the way it should work in a city like we have here. And we're going to hold the people accountable that we need to hold accountable. And we're going to see that it's done by the book and that it's done right. And hopefully it'll be successful when it's all over. So that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Well said. Getting a pot for you. I know. I know. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Um, anybody else want to? I'm. I'm in particularly not to put anybody on the spot. Mr. Gallo, you're probably the most educated up here about all this as an architect. I would be interested to hear your thoughts on this. So. If you don't mind me calling you out, I'd like to. I'd like to hear from you. Everybody will have Colin may have some Mr. Will, everybody's going to get a chance, but I, 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 I am particularly interested in what a architect has to say about this. Uh, okay. So I, I uh, addressed that question of Michelle, um, and for the record, Michelle's a, a really. I've worked with her many cities. She's a marvelous planner. Um, Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm looking at there where you are. Um, and we're very fortunate to have her on this project. I uh, agree with the comments. I just want to open with something for the public, and I'm not running for office, but um, this is a property. It's a very important property, and we have to understand one thing. It will redevelop. It has to redevelop. It's old. It's tired. It needs to redevelop. The question is, how can we work together with the developer, the city, our planners, our land development regs, the goal of our comprehensive plan, all of those things to make this the best possible, and I'm going to use the word compromise because in the end it will be a compromise, but hopefully it will be the compromise where everyone walks away happy rather than one person's happy and the other person's disappointed. So our goal is to create a win-win. It's possible. It's very hard tonight to look at the plans that Terry has presented because to get through this land development regulation amendment and then to get to an ultimate zoning and then to deal with the land development regulations that will govern each of those zones will have a great impact on what that plan looks like. So it's kind of almost difficult even for me as, a, as you call me a technician or whatever to look at that and make sense out of it. But I think Terry has gone run a half marathon already to try and give us a picture of at least what his intention is, and I really thank you for that. You know, um, <clears throat> but living, and I, not only just an architect, but I live in this neighborhood, so I have to drive down 39th Street every day of my life, down to either 27th Terrace or 30th Avenue where I live to go home. So I'm gonna, have, I wear two hats. My hat is one as a planning board <laughs> member and the other as a citizen. And at times, I guess I'll have to go out there and talk and sit here and talk. Three minutes. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, three minutes. Three minutes left. Well, three minutes left. Yeah. So, um, and the real issue is going to be whether we look at this as what I call a PUD, but it's not a PUD. Um, but for it to be successful, in my mind, there's no way that this plan being presented tonight would meet the regulations where you'd have 
a zone that's residential and a zone that's commercial and all of the typical setback requirements and walls and all of the stuff that you have to do to separate those zones. Can't, just can't be. So we'll have to kind of look at this with a different hat um, because we want to look at this as two things that are mutually supportive. And that's really what the developer is proposing. Two things that are mutually supportive. He needs to do this residential in order to justify what he needs to do at the Yacht Club. We understand as planning and zoning board members that economics is never a driver of what we're to review. We review land development regulations, but we have to keep in mind that if they're not mutually supportive, it's just not going to happen. So at least what I'm looking for at this point in time is how are we going to create this land use development amendment? How are we going to institute the zones and what kind of regulations that we're going to impose upon those two zones as relates to this specific property via condition of use because we don't want them anybody else to walk in here and say it's, it applies to their property now it applies to my property just for the public that's what a conditional use means it's specific to the property um, I currently think that as presented there's too much bulk on the site bulk meaning um, too much mass of buildings. And for those of you who may know me, I've been an advocate for 15 to 20 years here to try and do away with what I call canyon effect in Lighthouse Point. We tried to make some, uh, is that my three minutes? No, no, no. We're trying to, we're trying to get Susan Molly back on the phone. Oh. Canyon effect is when you allow buildings to be built to a certain height, to a certain setback. And, and if you build a number of them in a row, and you've seen this on certain residential streets with single family, when you get down the street and it looks like one big apartment building from a certain perspective. Um, Terry, if you don't mind the little criticism, that rendering I don't think helps you right there. That one just came up. Because it's a real example of canyon effect. I mean, this is what we're trying not to do. Uh, get the red pack, get the red pack, get the red pack. <laughs> And that's, that's kind of a broad brush interpretation on my point, but it really means when I see that, that there's too much bulk. So there's probably going to be more, in my opinion, compromise on the number of units on the site um, because I'm concerned about, and I don't want to get into technical details because I know the site plan is going to change, and I'm talking as fast as I can. I'm from New York. So the, the requirements for, like somebody says, you, you know, you come in right now, it's great that it's one way, but if I live on the on the, I'm lost on my east. Building two. If I lived along the uh, two and three. west side, um, I've got to go, i got to drive around the yacht club all the time. Well, God forbid there's an event going on that night and everybody's queuing up to go under the entrance. I wouldn't be able to get home if you think about that. So we need to resolve, and that's just like one of a myriad of issues that need to be resolved. I believe every one of them is resolvable when people cooperate. So my impression is just off the cuff, a little too much bulk. We're probably going to look to create a way that these are mutually supportive. So in my mind, that means a certain development agreement on phasing that you might think about. Um, and perhaps a little more open space. If I were to buy one of those, I might be a, I might be a potential buyer looking to downside. Um, and my grandkids come to see me, if my kids ever have grandkids, I'd like for them to have a place to play. So, I mean, that's important. And, uh, and you know, if it's, a, if it's an important day and the, and the overflow lot's full of cars, where are they going to do that? Typically, we want that. If I want to have a Super Bowl party at my house and invite 15 of my favorite friends, I'd like to know that they have a parking space. So we're probably going to need to think about some designated guest spots. So for the record, we're reviewing a project right up the street right now at 39th Street and Dallas Drive. Drive. And that's an issue we're imposing upon that developer as well. Um, architectural style, <clears throat> I'm a modernist, what can I tell you? Um, it is a little, little avant-garde for Lighthouse Point. There's probably a little more, I don't know where your architect is, but there's probably a little more compromise perhaps in the architectural style uh, to address what people in this town like to see. Um, look at it in my notes. Fire an EMS, they'll bring it to your knees no matter what you do. We just got to solve their problems. I'm a little curious about the dock rental thing because when I go to the Yacht Club now, often people with bigger boats, they hire, they'll call up a company and they come work on their boat when they're not around. I'm wondering where those vehicles will park 
how they would get to the boat if the boat was behind my townhouse, where you'd even park delivery vehicles. If we have one problem in this town, and I'll bet you every one of these residents will agree with me, somebody on the block's building a new house, and half the time you can't get home because the contractor trucks are there, the landscape trucks are there, they're cutting the grass on your street that day, they're picking up the recycling, and you just can't get down. 31st Avenue is a very good example of that. Um, so we probably need to figure that out, and I think that's going to play into how much bulk is on the site. So that's about all I could see in my notes. I could talk for another half an hour, but nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Johnson. Um, I'm just going to be brief, but I just wanted to say that I agree with what Mr. Walker said, that I feel like the Yacht Club is an extraordinarily important part of our community, and I believe we need to do whatever we can to make this work. And I was optimistic in the, uh, Mr. Patterson tonight, having met with the department, the DRC, and some of the suggestions that came from Chief Licata, et cetera, that he did already change his plan somewhat to accommodate these different changes. So I think that goes along with Mr. Gallo said, that it's got to be a process of give and take, that we all have to be have an open mind, and we have to cooperate. The builders have to cooperate. And if we all do and we're patient, I think we can get it done. But I also would piggyback on what someone else said. Please go to our website. Don't go to social media because the crazy things out there. I was told today that it was all a done deal and all five commissioners had voted on it already. And it was this was just a, a, a meeting for no good reason. And I swear three people told me that when I voted over at the Yacht Club today. So, you know, don't don't listen to that. This is a process up to all the meetings, 12 public meetings or 10 public meetings. You'll all get a chance to say whatever you want to say. And write us letters. We've gotten letters from people today. So write us, call us, whatever. And we'll do it and make it work. We have Mr. Long, Mr. Cohen, and Mr. Haddock left to speak. Who would like to? Don't feel obligated, but. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything to add uh, like Bill did. I, I'm very interested in hearing what everyone has to say on the board and the public because I'm just going to filter. Like, I really appreciate that you've made the changes that I read needed to be yeah. made. And that's the process. So, uh, but, you know, I'm the umpire, so I don't really have a, uh, much to add in terms of what I want to see. Okay. Sounds good. Commissioner Long. Thank you. Um, and I do appreciate uh, a lot of things that are happening here. I know when we did Vintage Properties, which is the uh, former trailer park on Federal Highway, we kind of went through it as the first large development we had in many years. And I, I think we kind of messed that one up a little bit. It's a very dense project, uh, just total walls everywhere, and we were sort of bamboozled, but it was our own fault. And that was probably 15, 18 years ago. Uh, so since then, we take a, a sharp eye to this, and um, I appreciate the fact that we have a new owner, and Terry, you've done a lot for the club itself as far as renovating it, updating it, um, while going through the process of making it more family-friendly. Uh, truly appreciate that. I think the project itself, Bill, is, is right on target with everything he said, that you know something had to be done, something will be done, uh, I'm not sure what that will be, and I know these plans have constantly changed, and I wish we had those changes that we could have reviewed. I understand this is work in progress. So, you know, we look forward to seeing those changes that you had mentioned. I, I, I said I tried, you know, making the changes as you were talking, and we appreciate the fact I think that parking in the northeast corner was a problem with the stacked parking valet only making that more members that the fire truck would have more space. And again, it'll be for the you know our fire department and our police to go through all these things to make sure that they work. Uh, I am very concerned about the density of it, the, the canyon effect, uh, which you see in vintage uh, when you have buildings at 34 and a half feet, 35 feet, um, plus they are stacked up higher, obviously, with the flood zones that we have now that you know we're kind of forced to bring the property a little bit higher. Uh, as far as landscaping along those areas in the waterfront, we are semi-limited because you can't put large hedges on the waterfront property. I think they're maxed out at three, um, three. so you're still going to have a fairly large wall going straight down the canals, and I think that's a concern. Um, you know, I think the, the idea of getting rid of a few townhomes here and there is a start, 
Um, but as we move forward, I'd like to see these uh, changes. Again, I think it's it's got a lot of walls here. I'm concerned about that. It would be nice to have more space. Uh, the parking, we got to work on that. We know that. I am very concerned as well as what Bill had said about people from Building 2 and Building 3 that just instead of going around the entire area is to really just go <coughs> straight up the street even though it's one way because they live there and they think they can do it, which is just human nature. And, of course, the guest uh, parking is a, is a big concern because people do have a party and there's, I mean, more than a couple cars there. I know you have them stacked. So you have two in the garage and two in the driveway, but like most people, there's a lot of junk in the garage. You don't always get the two cars in the two-car garage. So that, that affects the numbers and the plans. But I do look forward to working with, continued working with you all and seeing what we can do as far as compromise. And I know that mayors are always talk about what a compromise is, what kind of both sides lose, but I think this can be a win-win because this is kind of, for lack of any other historical property, this is something that Lighthouse Point has been very involved in, you know, since the get-go is the Yacht Club, so it's in our Yacht Club, whether it was private or not, it was Lighthouse Point's Yacht Club, and I think there's something to be said about that, and I hope that we can work forward. I am concerned about the residents on 27th. Uh, 42nd and 30th and that surrounding area because I do believe it will create a problem especially with that gatehouse however we set it up um, so those are concerns as we move forward they really need to be addressed and we really need to buy into the community thank you Commissioner Long Mr. Haddock anything down there no, I'm uh, excited about the project um, I think the, the proper steps are being taken I think it's a long like we had mentioned before, it's going to be a long, a long process, and I think through working through that long process, we will come to some type of solution that will that will hopefully please most everybody. Not everybody totally, of course. That's the way it always works, but um, I, it's something that needs to be done, and I and I think it I think it'll work through. Thank you. Perfect. Twenty minutes for me. So we have twenty minutes left. No, that's good. Um, so, Mr. Patterson, I think you met with all the commissioners back in December, me included. I'm going to reiterate the same thing to you and your team that I, that I told you back then. I told you I'm a pretty straight shooter, and um, my, my thoughts on this haven't changed. That's the same thing I've told many people here already. I support the rebirth of the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club, and I'm resigned to the fact that probably some sort of development is going to have to happen to to make that so. So my objective is is the Yacht Club. I, I view the development, the residential development, is really a means to that end. And as everybody's touched on here, how that is accomplished is what our planning and zoning board is going to work hard to accomplish, and then the city commission will review. But the three things that I see are that the redevelopment is, and this is a key word, consistent with what is occurring no, I didn't say like identical to, but consistent with what is occurring back in that neighborhood right now. And, and I'll be the first to admit, I'm a, I'm a simple, I'm a simple attorney. That's what I told you. Um, you know how high the buildings are. I get that this is a dense project, but I'm going to leave a lot of that to the experts. And in my opinion, um, if you can satisfy our planning and zoning board on those fronts, and they're important fronts, um, I think, subject to my further comment. I think you're going to be able to satisfy me. With that said, one thing I'd like to see the planning, and it's sticking in my craw on that front, one thing I would like to see the Planning and Zoning Board discuss is this notion, and maybe I'm the only one that thinks this, this notion that we are going to almost be creating a little plan unit development, like city, within a city of Lighthouse Point. It's something that we haven't done before. and. One of the things that's, I think, charming about Lighthouse Point is, is we don't have that. I'm not against it. I'm not for it. I want to hear, I'd like to hear the Planning and Zoning Board discuss that and, and get comfortable with it. I understand why you're doing it. If I was trying to sell $1.5 to $2 million townhomes too, I want to create a sense of exclusivity. I want to make it top tier. So I completely get it. So consistency with the 115 homes that are back there is, is a concern of mine. The other thing is, again, we all bring expertise to the table here. And, and part of my expertise is actually, and I told you this when we met, is litigating what happens when beautiful designs like this don't come to fruition. 
And so I've seen what happens when developments go south through no fault of a developer that has all the best intentions of the world to make it happen. So to me, I would like to see, and there are things that we can put in place that can minimize the likelihood of that happening, like performance bonds, things that are going to ensure that, again, through nobody's fault, through forces that are beyond everybody's control, that if for whatever reason, and I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer about this project, it's just I feel as a city commissioner that I have to think about those contingencies and plan for them and minimize the risk. Because the last thing I want is for there to be a 10-acre open, open sore in the city for an extended period of time. Because I have seen what that can do to communities. I want to make it abundantly clear that I don't want that to happen. If something gets approved, I don't, I, I would never want that to happen, but it is a possibility. So that is something that weighs on me and something that I think we can work toward to protect the city. And finally, the other thing that does concern me is what might happen if we do approve, again, my objective here is the outcome. And what happens if we give you permission to build X number of townhomes or something, and how do we ensure that that yacht club gets built? Respectfully, I think to ask the city commission and the planning and zoning board to just say, go build 33 X number of townhomes, and then we hope you build the yacht club is a pretty big ask. Um, and I know there's ways we can achieve that through uh, development agreements and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, you're a developer. You, you, you take risk for a living. That's why you're a successful developer. Um, my objective in doing this is to achieve the goal of a beautiful, vibrant lock, yacht club, but do my best to minimize the risk of the downside. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people out here today that are very in favor of this. I'm sure there are some people out here that aren't so in favor of it. Um, so I am willing to risk something. How much I'm willing to risk, I, I can't in all candor answer that for you right now because we haven't gone through the process. And that's what's going to be going through my mind when this finally lands on our desk and the city commission votes on it. So those are my thoughts. I think those are pretty much the three things I told you when we met in December. Um, but I wanted to be consistent. Um, I appreciate, like everybody said, the, um, the changes that you've made to date. You're working with us. You're communicative. This is going to be an open and transparent process. Um, let's, let's leave this. Let's try and keep the court of public opinion out of this. I understand you're trying to sell townhomes as well, but I'm kind of a just the facts guy. So let's stick it, keep it to the facts, and um, we'll get through this. And in the end, I hope nothing more that we have a beautiful, new, vibrant yacht club that this community can enjoy for the next 50 years. So we actually did this in an hour and 18 minutes. Um, does anybody have any other questions for anybody? We can maybe just have a couple minutes for open mic. Any questions for our police chief, fire chief, planning director, Mr. Patterson and his team? Okay. Could, could, yeah. Is it possible to just have Michelle? I think this would be helpful for everybody. If Michelle, can you just kind of lay out a, a timeline of how, if this process went in its normal course of the way projects would go, what the milestones, land use amendment, when would that end? Obviously, we have a hearing. Uh, we have amendments to do, two public readings, I guess, right? Then. So if you can go through those steps and, and give us an idea of if there were no major in, impasses, what are we looking at? Um, I can give you timelines, and I'll also qualify, for lack of a better word, the idea that some of these could run concurrently. So I'll start with the land use plan amendment, which is really the application that's before the city right now. It would go to the planning and zoning board, sitting as the local planning agency, it would go to the city commission, for a first reading and to transmit it to Broward County because of the form of government we have here in Broward County. The county gets to stick its finger in the pot and review it as well. So it would go to the Broward County Planning Council and on to the county commission. Then when they're done, it comes back 
uh, and comes back to the city for an adoption by the city commission. And that process can vary, um, but once it gets, I would say roughly eight months in, in round numbers, and it's pretty variable. A lot of it obviously is out of the city's control because it's going to depend on what the county does and how they schedule it and so forth. The city has the option, and it's strictly up to the city, it's a policy decision, if they want to start processing the rezoning uh, at the time that the land use plan amendment is marching through the process of the county. And it could actually be heard on a first reading. So a rezoning for the edification of the um, residents here, you have to hear it twice at a city commission meeting. It could go for a first reading of the two readings to pass it. And at the same time, the site plan, of course, is already in process and being reviewed. I think to, to summarize everything, it would be upwards of probably 10 months to a year by the time you get through everything. And that's as if it, it's pretty expeditious and everyone's working well together and no major obstacles. I, I think that's a, a, a safe number. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I mean, I just wanted to... Because there's a lot of people think this happens like that. No, it's, it's a, a lengthy process. So Mr. Levisky laid out the number of hearings. You'll have a hearing for at the Planning and Zoning Board at the City Commission twice. So that's three hearings so far just for the land use amendment. The rezoning has hearings. The site plan has hearings. And then if we have um, uh, conditional uses or we have changes to the zoning code, zoning code changes, for example, by state law have to go to the Planning and Zoning Board and then on to the City Commission for two hearings. That's three hearings just to change the zoning code. So I think 10 is a pretty conservative number and there may be well more than that. All of those public hearings and a chance for community input. And do we have, um, do we have room in our comp plan to accommodate the density additional units? Do we meet open space requirements? And The, the comp plan is uh, generic enough that yes, I think the bigger hurdle to overcome is going to be the zoning code, which is why I said at the end of the day I think it's going to be a policy decision of the city commission of this city uh, to determine how many changes you know need to be made because right now as it's presented, as the site plan is presented, there are just a number of issues that just don't meet code right now, which is not to say the plan is necessarily bad in all aspects. It could be that the code just didn't contemplate something like this. And that goes back to the give and take that many of you had mentioned tonight. One last question. Sure. So we haven't heard from Public Works tonight. Um, these buildings, we know it's a new yacht club. It'll be under the new fire, fire, Florida Fire Prevention Code. Everything's going to be sprinkled. Do we have infrastructure in place from major lines coming down either up Lighthouse Point Drive or 39th Street to provide the adequate supply that's going to be necessary, or do we need to start digging up the neighborhood? <clears throat> Chuck Schrano, our Public Works Director. Uh, yes, um, the Broward County serves that area for water and sewer service. Um, they've submitted a letter uh, that says the plants, the water plants and the sewer plants have excess capacity. It can easily, easily be supplied. Um, I'm unaware of any issues with the water lines in that area. The sewer lines are old. Um, it's 50-year-old clay pipes. I know the county is in the, is in the process of replacing um, some force mains in the city that indirectly will serve this area um, and do now. Uh, they also have a planned uh, lift station uh, re rehabilitation on our major lift station, number 224 at 41st Street. Right. And there's, nice. a, yeah. there's a smaller uh, lift station, I think it's at the end of 26th Avenue, that mm -hmm. serves that area. That area is gravity out to 39th, and then it goes to the lift station, and then it goes into Force Main over to 224. So um, there are some Force Main issues in that area along 39th Street. A short portion's been replaced. Um, but I mentioned in the DRC comments that um, the developer should definitely get with the county and uh, evaluate specifically the sewer system, I think, is, is the uh, Are the fire lines looped, and do we have adequate size for pressure for the buildings he's proposing? To the best of my knowledge, I, I think there's been a second secondary water line placed in that area that's 12 inch, but I haven't confirmed that, which should, I think, offer the capacity. Um, but I also know that uh, the city engineer representative brought up some drainage issues. 
just due to the site plan because they're going to have to have an environmental resource license mm. and the county will review uh, storage and there's not enough storage presently on the site. So that sounded like a maybe. <laughs> that sounded like a maybe. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, I, I assume um, there's a lot left, a lot of work left to do. Um, we ran out of time, as I suspected, for public comment. Apologize, but rest assured, as you see, no action was taken, no votes were taken. There's going to be plenty of opportunity for public comment. So before we adjourn, I, I would propose that we set up another workshop. Um, we can talk about the agenda for that, but I think a substantial portion of that workshop should be dedicated to public comment. Um, so let's talk about scheduling. I think it needs to happen before the October 2nd planning and zoning meeting. So is everybody on board with that? And we can try and herd the cats and get everybody together or try and do that now? Or does that sound like a plan to everybody? Well, why don't we check with Mr. Patterson can update things we've already yeah. talked about and things with Phil and Michelle. Well, Terry, are you going to want to go for a second, another DRC prior to having another workshop? Because you're going to need to do that before October 2nd. Yeah, that's probably best if we can fit it in. We're, we're ready. Um, I also suggest that the next workshop that maybe we let uh, my civil engineer say something because there's a lot of questions come up with civil. And he's got all the answers. Everything we've just brought up here right now, we've, we've done all the research. We've got all the answers. But, yes, the quicker we can do anything, Glenn, we'll when be ready. When do you think you can turn new plans for the DRC? You know I was going to ask you that yeah. question. I mean, you... Uh, I'm probably, you don't have to, I don't mean to yeah. put you on the spot. If you got to check, that's fine. But that's our time, my, that's that's our time frame we're thinking. I've done most of what I need to do just to give to him, and uh, I was going to do a couple more adjustments based on what people said tonight, and I'm ready to hand it to my architect. So it shouldn't be too long. Okay. Mr. Levitsky? Yes, sir. We just were notified by Mr. Patterson that the Mr. Gallo, they're not going to be here on October 2nd for the planning and zoning board, so that's, ten, that's we would have to cancel that or, or reschedule it because it's important to have both of those members yeah. uh, at the planning board. You also okay. have Dennis recused. Yeah, so you only have, you only have a quorum. And Susan, is, and Susan is Susan is still in North Carolina. <laughs> she won't be back. So, we'll, I mean, let's, let's leave that to planning and zoning to reschedule. We, we, we can always call a special meeting of planning and zoning, can't we, John? So oh, oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. So let's get with uh, you know, Bill and Michael. Yeah, you have to check with and everybody. There's a Ken bond lady schedule, there. Uh, Mark's schedule. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Fred's back. We're healed by then. And uh, see what we can do about getting a date certain on the calendar sooner than later. But that also gives, even if we push it a week or two, it gives Terry some more time to get his plans pulled together so he can get through a DRC. So I guess my suggestion would be is we not set a workshop right now until we know yep. what, our, what our timeline is over the next few weeks. Terry, how, how long do you need to get plans pulled together and submitted to DRC? I, just, you didn't I, I think I can do it in a week. Okay, so within yeah. the next, let's yeah. say within the next. <laughs> I was about to say, let's give him two weeks. two weeks. It's good to be the king, right? It's good to be the king. Just say it, it happens. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else, commissioners? Thank you very much. Good talk. Good discussion. One of many. Planning and zoning members, anything? No? All right. We are adjourned.